Welcome back to another episode of Trading Secrets. Today, we are joined by reality star, singer, model, actress, philanthropist, and author. And let me tell you what, there's a lot more than that, but I had to stop so I could get through the intro. Luann De La Seps, she can do it all. Luann was featured in the first 13 of 14 seasons of The Real Housewives of New York City, and fans couldn't get enough. She transformed her career as a nurse into becoming one of Bravo's biggest stars. So big, in fact, that she was named the number one housewife by TV Guide, surpassing all 46 housewives across the franchise cities. She has gone on to start her own cabaret show, Countess and Friends, and her most recent television project, Luann and Sonia, Welcome to Crappy Lake, premiered on Bravo and Peacock in July 2023. I know my mom and I watched every bit of that. Luann, thank you so much for joining us on Trading Secrets. Hi, it's nice to be here. You are a trailblazer, girl. <laughs> what haven't you done? Oh my gosh! Um, right? Well, well, I've you know never worked at a um, supermarket, <laughs> but although I would love to. The list is. I've short. never been a bartender. Well, you know what? Maybe that'll be your next show. Oh my what god! Has Luann not done right? Or and you have to go like serve in right, these what roles. What won't the countess do? What, what? <laughs> I love that. Well, I want to kick off with this because we're going to go down your career track and all the stops and strategies and branding, and I want to go there. But I know you have exciting news because you are taking your tour to Alberta, and I believe Edmonton and Calgary, right? Yes, I am. I'm super excited. Uh, you know, my parents are Canadian, and so it's great to be uh, back in Canada. I've already done Toronto, and now I'll be in Calgary the 15th. Uh, at the Eagle, at the Great Eagle Event Center okay. on the 15th. And on the 16th of December, I'll be at the River Center or River Creek Resort and Casino. So, Amazing. yeah, so there's a big uh, casinos. And then, you know, I kick off a new tour uh, in 2024. Uh, inspired by my fans called Mary F. Kill, and that's debuting at the Wiltern on February 16th for Valentine's Day. Perfect time it's all for about a little. We want to marry Mary F. F. Kill. Kill. Yeah, I like. That. I mean, do you have do you have one on the top? You're like, do people present you three, and then you have to name who you'd marry F. and Kill, or do you guys exactly? Come up with it? Well, okay. this so this happened to me at 54 Below, where I started my cabaret career in yep. 2018. Um, a, a fan asked me. She said, "Okay, Mary F. Kill, David Letterman." Uh, Brad Pitt or Andrew Dice Clay. Okay. Um, now, Andrew Dice Clay, I know the name, but I didn't know he was a comedian or et cetera. Yeah. So anyway, so I said, well, I'm going to marry David Letterman because he's funny and okay. he's rich. Okay. Um, I've that. never been a big fan of Brad Pitt. So I'm really? like, I'm going to kill Brad Pitt okay. and I'm going to, I'm going to F Andrew Dice Clay. And she goes, good, because he's standing right behind me. Oh my <laughs> God. God. You nailed it. <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay stands up and he's like, you know, with the cigarette hanging out of his mouth, oh, I fucking love you, Countess, you're amazing, you know. And then he ended up hanging out in my dressing room after with, uh, with his fiance, and that's how he ended up there. Okay, I was going to say, did you guys go on a date? Right now, he's a big, he's a big, he's a big, he's, she's a big fan, and that's how he wound up at the show. And then we ended up having the same agent, and you know, yeah. So okay. yeah, that's really has been my inspiration because every cabaret show I do a Q and A. Okay. Because my show is very immersive. I mean, yeah. it is a full on party. It is pop culture meets cabaret meets comedy. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, yeah. So I'm let's let's do a Mary F. Kill just for fun. Here. Okay, let's sure. go right. Let's throw uh, George Clooney up there. <laughs> okay. Let's throw Leonardo DiCaprio. He's come back on the news for some uh, interviews I've seen, and who's very hot on Netflix documentary now, David Beckham. So let's go oh, Leonardo wow. DiCaprio, David Beckham. George Clooney, that's an ultimate trio right there. Yeah, I'm going to have to marry Clooney. That's a good move. Right? I mean, how could you not? I'm going to have to F, as everybody else did, um, Leonardo. Leo, you're <laughs> killing David Beckham. <laughs> I'm going to have to kill David Beckham. Not into soccer, guys. All right, there we go. Noted. Um, all right, so where can people get tickets for the Alberta? Uh, Alberta uh, they can find out all the information for tickets and what's going on Um with new shows, et cetera, at CountessLuann.com. Okay, guys, go check that out. And I'll tell you this, get ready to party because Canadians, my ex was a Canadian, and those Edmontons and Calgarians, they can throw down. So oh, my God. Bring, am, they are going to bring the energy for I you. I am so ready. Okay, well, we're going to go back all the way to 2008. We had Ramona Singer on the podcast. I talked to her a little bit about negotiating with Bravo. Like, how do you know how much you should get paid when nothing really exists and there's not really a benchmark? This is what she said. I want your response or your take based on her comment. Here we okay. go. I'm negotiating for 7,500 an episode, right? But mm -hmm. then I walked away. So I go, what do I need this for? I'm already social. I'm famous yeah. with my friends. I have a great career. I have a husband, a social life. I don't need this stuff. 
And then like a little light bulb went off my head, like ding, ding, ding. I convinced my ex-husband to do True Faith Jewelry with me. I said, if you promote and showcase True Faith Jewelry, then I'll do the show. They agreed, and I did the show. Then this is the worst part. Jill Zarin and the other people were so desperate to do the show, they agreed to do all six episodes for only $7,500. What? Yes. So that's what Ramona said, that she was trying to negotiate for the big bucks, and the crew kind of screwed her over with negotiations. <laughs> What's your take on that going back all the way to the start? Oh, my God. Well, Ramone I mean, days? you know, in the very beginning, we got paid 10000 for the season, Yeah, <laughs> the first season of the show. And you know what? To tell you the truth, I really don't remember, like, what we got paid, like, the second season. Yeah. Um, but, you know, after it became so successful, uh, we started to get, you know, agents and yeah. lawyers involved. And so uh, the negotiating was really done through them. But obviously it, you know, landed on us to be more aggressive or or not. So, For sure. yeah, so it's an ensemble cast. So it's really hard yeah. uh, that one person makes more than the other because if one person opens their mouth, yeah. you know, the other one, you and we're all in trouble. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, and then, you know, Finally, in the end, after 13 seasons, we, you know, we did pretty well. So from the 10,000, you guys grew it. How did you know what season, like, your brand took off? Like, that, Luann was like a household name. Real house, you know, name. I have to say, probably after <coughs> Ronnie came out, Ronnie can't buy a class. Okay. Um, yeah, which is, you know, was just used for an Uber Eats campaign. Yeah, so, which is so cool. Uh, it is so crazy, right? The that song, you know, that there. song came about, you know, and I won't tell you what housewife that's about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it really came about through my manners and etiquette book because, you know, I lived in Europe for a long time and I came back to the States and even my kids were like, mom. The kids in the cafeteria are like throwing food and they let spaghetti drip out of their mouth. It's disgusting. You know? <laughs> so, you know, I, I was inspired because of just, you know, uh, the difference between, you know, kind of European lifestyle and the American lifestyles. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when I produced when I can't buy you class, it was produced really from my book. Yeah. You know, elegance is learned. Yeah. You know, um, uh, money can't buy you class. Sure. Uh, you know, all these catchphrases that um, that I have are, are were in my book, and it was really the basis of my music. I really base a lot of my music off of the show and my experience, you yeah. know, like Chic Say La Vie and sure. Feeling Giovanni from that famous night where I got heckled on the stage. Yep. Um, and to, you know, Viva La Diva, because, yeah. you know, I, I believe that we all have that inner diva. It's, it's finding it and living it. You know? We all have it. I, I believe that. And it's mm -hmm. funny how something that you created then can still be so relevant today. Mm -hmm. With some of the things that you've done, there's been, it seems, such intention and strategy. When you think about the songs, right. the cabaret, mm -hmm. the book, right. talk to me a little bit about, in the cast of Real Housewives, how and what your thought has been with differentiating from a business perspective. Because to be number one of all 46 <laughs> and the many more today, and to still 15 plus years, be right. one of the most relevant, one of the most talked about. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what that business model looks like behind the scenes for Luann. Well, you know, I'm I'm a go-getter. You know, mm -hmm. I uh, take chances. I put myself out there. Um, when I started Cabaret in 2018, you know, I put together what I thought was missing, like a variety show of sorts. So it was it was Countess and Friends, and I used to have a lot of guests, like Lance Bass has been on yeah. in my show, Rachel Dratch from Saturday Night Live. You know, I've had some amazing guests. And, um, and then, you know, I realized that uh, I could do this on my own without having guests. And, of course, it's very expensive to fly people out, yeah. um, <clears throat> everybody in hotels, et cetera. So I didn't realize when I created, now it's Countess Cabaret, um, that I was really creating a void in the marketplace for a cabaret. There's really nobody doing cabaret anymore. It's, you know, it used to be Liza and it used to be Cheetah Rivera, right. you know, Lucy Arnaz. Lucy Arnaz is still performing, but um, yeah, so I created something that didn't really exist because I'm passionate about music and, sure. you know, and how that started is a friend of mine said, you know, Lou, you love to sing for your friends. You love to entertain. And you and you love to tell jokes. Yeah. You know, I've got news for you. You should be doing cabaret. And in the meantime, you know, I got married. Yeah, I got divorced. I was busy. <laughs> you know, I have kids. People forget I'm a mother. You know, um, and so, you know, I, I just really things kind of came to me. Like even the show came to me. I was yeah. at a party and Jill Zarin said, 
you know, I met Jill Zarin. She's yeah. like, hi, I'm Jill Zarin. And with that red hair and her accent, I was like, I've never met anybody like her in my lifetime. Meet my, meet Bobby. Yeah, my yeah, husband, yeah. Bobby. Uh, Bobby. Bobby. Bobby, Bobby. You know, and. My daughter, uh, Ellie. You know, exactly. So I had never met anybody like that in my life. And she said to me, you know, the, I'm doing this TV show and I think it would be perfect for it. So the show kind of came to me, you know, entertainment is really part of my background. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I used to work for Italian television for Berlusconi. Okay. Uh, I, um, you You're know, modeling I, too, right? I was With modeling. So, it was, so what happened yeah. is I was a nurse in Connecticut. Yep. I got involved in the Miss Connecticut beauty pageant for USA, um, which I just judged. So it's like full circle yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me. Right. It's like, um, that, that was amazing for me. Anyway, so I didn't do well at the beauty pageant at all, but there was a scout from a model agency okay. that said to me, you know what? You can make a lot of money as a model in New York. Interesting. So I entered this small model competition in Hartford, okay. Connecticut, and I won. And the, and the first place was a photo shoot in New York with a professional photographer. Okay. So, you know, by taking this chance, going into this contest, I knew I was not going to do well. I got convinced by um, a girlfriend. Uh, I was just happy being a nurse, you know? Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> so that, you know, I had a bad breakup. Um, and I think that really catapulted to me to New York. I think a lot of times we do things out of love and loss. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We yeah, move, we change because either we love somebody or we lost somebody, you yep, know? Exactly. So that was my big um, opportunity to get to New York. Now at 23, I'd never been to New York City and I lived in Connecticut. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I, I went to New York, I did the model shoot thing and um, and I ended up getting booked from this one photo where I looked kind of like Jacqueline Smith okay. um, back then. And so, and then <clears throat> that evolved into all the models talking about Milan and Paris. And I was like, yeah. well, I want to go to Milan and Paris. <laughs> so I've really always lived by the seat of my pants. Yeah. Kind of faced fear in mm -hmm. a big way. I moved to Milan. I didn't know anyone. I had one phone number. Wow. Um, and the modeling didn't, I didn't do well in modeling. And I ended up meeting Agon Furstenberg at a party who is D Diane Furstenberg's Prince Furstenberg uh, wife. And he came to me at the party and he goes, what are you doing in Milan? I said, well, I'm trying to model, but it's not going very well. He goes, you should work in television. Meet Johnny Manganelli. Uh, Johnny Manganelli, come to Rome next week. I'll give you a job. And, and I look at my friend and, and at Egon Furstenberger, and he goes, go. Okay. So I did. I took a flight to Rome Okay. by myself. I went to meet these producers, yeah. and I, got, I became the Vanna White of Italian television. That is incredible. Crazy. And then I yeah. ended up, I realized if I could speak Italian, I could go really far. So I studied Italian. Okay. I speak Italian fluently. And Damn. I ended up bec becoming the co-host of my own show on soccer with somebody who was like Bob Hope of Italian television. So I became a huge star in Italian television. Oh my God. What a bizarre turn I of events. I know. And then I went skiing with my Italian boyfriend to Switzerland yeah. and I met the Count. Wow. And I married That's him two a... weeks later and I left my career. Wait, stop. That's yeah. wow. Okay. And then a lot I had of my kids. There. So that yeah. is a wild road. I would expect nothing less from you. I want to take a couple stops because we do talk a lot about financial transparency in this podcast. Mm -hmm. The modeling. You said it was tough. For modeling, how does it work? You get booked per like by a brand and then they'll pay you a certain dollar amount for a shoot like how does the economics of modeling work? Uh, so you know typically you have an agency yeah you know and they they try to book you you okay. know they'll send out your headshot you okay. have to go on go sees what they yeah. call go sees you have yeah. to show up to the client okay uh half the time you'll love this i used to get jobs because i was a nurse so it, I was model slash nurse and not model slash actress or waitress, okay. you know. And so, like, I, I would get, like, the Newport cigarette ad that was shooting in Colorado skiing, yeah. you know, because they wanted to take along a nurse, you know. Ah, um, but, you know, my roommates, one was fi in finance and the other one was in real estate. They would say to me, Lou, there's thousands of models in New York. What makes you think you're going to get the job? Right, right. And I'm like, well, because I'm just as good as everyone else. Why shouldn't I get the job? I love that. Right. If you yeah. don't think you're hot, nobody else will. Yeah. And I believe that. And that I talked to someone that's in that was in the Miss USA pageant for 2023. Mm -hmm. And they had told me, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, for mm -hmm. Miss USA, you were in charge of judging their confidence and presence on stage. Is that correct? Well, yeah. I mean, it's overall. I mean, okay, so overall, overall look, overall. Yeah. yeah. So then mm -hmm. I, for people back home, <clears throat> they don't a lot of majority of people really struggle with exactly what you just said. They struggle with believing themselves. Mm -hmm. There are nurses right now listening to this podcast that struggle with finding their next shot. 
right. having fear in the way. Right. What type of advice do you have for those people? Where do they find their confidence if they have no idea where to go? Well, I just, I'm a big believer in manifestation and meditation and, okay. um, you know, you have to make it happen. I mean, life is a cabaret. You know, I write my own story and, and people I think out there, you know, if they have a passion, whatever mm -hmm. it is they love to do, you know, when you do something with heart, you're generally going to win. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, overthinking it and not following your gut and your mm -hmm. instinct and following your heart, um, things don't generally go as well. Right. So, you know, and I think, you know, being fearless, taking okay. chances, you know, people, you know, young girls will say to me, you know, how can I meet a guy? Like, yeah. how can, how is that going to happen? I said, well, travel, yeah. you know, yeah, learn yeah. language, get out of your comfort zone and try something different and take a chance. That's a good piece of advice. Yeah, truly. And I, and I feel like being interested makes you interesting. Yeah. That's another great piece of advice. Mm -hmm. so. And, and the minute you think you're ripe, you're already rotten because you never know enough. I never know enough. Those are three trading secrets right there. The minute you stop growing, the minute you've lost yourself, exactly. all of us can grow no matter how yeah. far successful we've mm -hmm. come. You talk about taking chances, talk a little bit about your negotiation for Real Housewives in New York. Mm -hmm. Was there any hesitation for you to go on the show once it was presented to you? Of course there was. Yeah. I mean, you know, at first they called it Manhattan Moms. Okay. Because I think if I saw the Housewives of OC, mm -hmm. don't forget, I'm married to a French aristocrat at this point. Yeah, I course. got two small children. Yeah. I have a big life. I'm living between Europe and, and the States, you know, yeah. in the Hamptons. Um, and so, um, if I had seen the OC, I don't think I would have ever done the show. Okay. Interesting. Well, yeah. that's good to know. And I'm glad you did it. And <laughs> so I'm sure you are as well. It all, it oh, all paid sorry. off. Yeah, it did all pay off and I have no regrets. One of the things we talk about too, is the idea of love and profession. Um, just tragedy and triumph. So within our personal lives, things happen, divorces, mm -hmm. setbacks, breakups yeah. in your if you look at like your entire career through those times, did you find that those tragedies propelled you or brought you away from your success? And for someone right now that's listening to this, that's going through a tough time personally, mm -hmm. but is still trying to focus on propelling their profession or financial situation forward. What do they do in those times of distress? Because you've experienced them. Couple times, a few times. Oh yeah. Oh boy, I've been, you know, I've had my ups and downs, that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, you just have to keep on standing up. Do you remember that there used to be this blow-up doll that was weighted at the bottom? Oh yeah. You know, you used to hit it, it down. <laughs> to hit it and it yeah. would just stand right back yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like, you know, uh you have to keep standing back up. You have to keep on trying. And I think persistence pays off. Okay. Uh I think sometimes you have to get out of your own way and uh lead with your heart. Um, and, um, and, you know, manifest what it is that you want to do. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. All right. You're one of the most longstanding individuals that have been in unscripted TV. If you think about years that you've been involved still to this day, mm -hmm. when you look at the financial aspect of it, what do you think if you talk to 2008 Luann, what would you tell her was your financial high through this period? Like a moment that you'll never forget either you got paid to do something or it was a episode or it was a big deal it was like the financial high through this crazy profession of unscripted tv well you know <clears throat> god i've had a lot of great opportunities from doing the show but i have to say one that really stands out to me is when i got a call from natalie cole's team okay and they said natalie cole wants to be on the show and she wants to sing with you i was like blown away you know yeah. um and so that that's that's a moment that I will never ever forget. And you know, and I like in my cabaret, you know, I sing L O V E in, in memory of the great late Natalie Cole. So cool. Uh yeah, no, and it's just um, you know, there's been so many great opportunities from that moment till, you know, yesterday when the Uber Eats campaign came along and, you know, money can buy you class, it can buy you a gift on Uber Eats, you know what I mean? <laughs> Which is so cool. I would have never imagined that this song I wrote in 2009 comes to fruition. Would these well, years. what's playing yeah. in, in clubs, it's, yeah. you know, um, people love it. People, you know, sing it in my audience, you know, for my cabaret shows, people sing along. I don't sing a song that the audience doesn't know yeah so it's really kind of an all you know inclusive uh show and immersive um so everybody feels like they're a part of it that's pretty cool um you know so you know financially you know look i 
would love to be in syndication. Yeah. But reality stars true. aren't protected like that. Yeah. And our show is worldwide syndicated. It is. You know, and so is Crappy Lake. So, you know, maybe there's maybe there's hope for reality there. So when you talk about reality, you brought the conversation up. <laughs> I, of course, have to bring it up. We all know where it's going. Uh, we've seen Bethany Frankel's movement on reality TV. Right. Do you have an opinion? Do you agree with some of what she says? Do you disagree with it? Listen, What's your think, overall take? Well, my overall take is I don't think <laughs> she's she's wrong about, you know, protecting reality stars, yeah. you know. Um, we started in a day where, you know, it was not the same. Yeah. You know, it's it's definitely not the same thing. Um, so I totally get that part. I just yeah. don't get the part where she's going after Andy. Yeah. You know, who yeah. really like launched said, her uh, career. Yeah. I mean, you know. So Interesting. That part I don't like. Yeah. Okay. There's also an interesting dichotomy there because she still has to produce a podcast. Yeah, and talk about is, us. Right. Which so is it's ridiculous. Like, it's kind of, if you think about it, there's a lot of moving parts there. Yeah, yeah she dishes yeah. about us all the time, and now yeah. she just can't stop talking about us. So. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's talk about the economics of some of the stuff you've done, right? So you have a, a new show out now. You've done Real Housewives. You have a book. You have songs. Which, when you think about the different career moves you've made from the show or off the show, have been the most lucrative? My cabaret career. Really? Definitely. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, so, so cabaret has been more lucrative than Real Housewives. Well, uh, when you say outside of Housewives. Outside of Housewives. Okay. Yeah. If Got you it. say outside of Housewives, yeah. it's definitely, you know, cabaret and my continuing um, uh, success on TV shows. So yeah. Crappy Lake came yeah. about, of course, because of Sonia and I and our relationship. Um, yeah. I, you know, they, the producers of The Simple Life originally – and all the Kardashian shows, Jeff Jenkins Productions actually, <clears throat> excuse me, produced uh, Crappy Lake. Okay. And they came to the franchise and said, you know, who do you have for us? And they, you know, out of all the 499 housewives they have, Damn. they picked Lou and Sonia. It's like the Laverne and Shirley. We even have the same initials. So, um, so I would say, you know, continuing my work in television, um, definitely. And to Ultimate Girls Trip, which is coming yeah. out December 14th yep. on Peacock. And Crappy Lake is still streaming on Peacock. So outside of television, Cabaret has really been the most lucrative. Okay, two things while we're on that. <clears throat> Crappy Lake, will it get renewed? What is the process of that? Well, listen, we uh, I've heard there's rumblings okay. that that uh, that it will continue, but uh, we don't have any confirmation on that Okay, yet. gotcha. Right. And when you go into a show like that and you're negotiating for your own show, are you, it's gotta be so different than being a real housewife. Like, are you talking about like negotiating production rights and like, how does that change when it's your show? Just two of you guys. Well, you know, you have to have a success out of the gate and Crappy Lake was successful. Yeah. So, you know, coming back, you know, if there's another season, you know, obviously there's a lot of production that goes in for me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I produced the entire, the entire damn uh, cabaret, you know, yeah. or real, um, um a variety show with the townspeople in Benton, Illinois, uh, you know, Sonia and I did. And so, you know, I hope there is room there for us to get some acknowledgement and, um, and you know, that's really an agent at this point. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So you don't, you stay away from all the oh, negotiations. Oh yeah. I let, I let, I let the big boys handle okay. that. But then do you give the big boys like a target sure, or do you just of say, course. okay, of course. gotcha. Yeah. Now, cause I tell me if this is any there anywhere close. There's an article out there that says now, it costs around twenty thousand dollars for you to make an appearance on Real Housewives in New York. Is that article anywhere close to reality? You know, I don't know because yeah. I've never made an appearance. <laughs> I've always been a cast member. <laughs> That's incredible. So you so, know, I don't where know where <laughs> they get this information. I have no idea. We have no idea. We have, but no here idea. we are. Yeah. All right. I think that what's really cool. We talked a little bit about this before the show. You said it's been the most lucrative move for you outside of Real Housewives. Mm -hmm. The whole cabaret. I mean, no one has done anything like it. Mm -hmm. You created it from scratch. Yes. When you started the cabaret, do you like how does the, the the business model start? Do you have to front all the money? Do you have someone that fronts it for you? No. Are you just taking mm -hmm. a shot at each each event? Like, tell me about mm -hmm. starting it, the business plan behind it. Well, I you know I started it in New York, and um, <laughs> I was at the time you know I had a couple creatives that were working with me that you know decorated the stage. You know, I used to have you know for Christmas I'd have a sleigh and Christmas trees and the whole thing and. 
Um, and if not, I had my dressing table with the big mirror and a chaise, you know, for me to lounge on kind of set pieces. And then as the show got bigger, you know, I couldn't travel with all this stuff, but I used to right. order things and have them delivered <laughs> to the theaters. So I front all the money. Okay. Okay. Um, my agent will go out and, you know, pitch venues, mm -hmm. et cetera, you know? Um, so I front all the money. Um, I have a crew of seven, eight people. I have a director, Richard J. Alexander, who directed Kristen Chenoweth and oh. <clears throat> Kristen Chenoweth, he's directed and um, Bette Midler and Barbara Streisand. Wow. So I have one of the most amazing directors, Richard J. And I have a great agent, Rich Super. And um, and I have my team, you know, I have my yeah. band, I have my musical director, I have my assistant travel with me, I have a makeup artist that travels with me. Um, and so, you know, it started small. And yeah. then, um, and then, you know, Richard J. Alexander came to my show. Um, the director, he was the mentor of my then director, Ben Rimmelauer. And, um, and he came to the show and he goes, Countess, you blew my mind. First of all, you can sing. Second of all, you're funny as shit. And third, you wear a dress like no woman I've ever seen. You're going to be a big star. This is not a gay show. This is for everyone. Yeah. And you're going to go big with this. And yeah. I was like, oh, wow, okay. And, you know, he found me an agent. And before I knew it, I was on the Live Nation tour. Damn. Yeah. And, and it was Countess and Friends. Okay. And I had all these guests. Sure. And then, of course, after COVID and all that, yeah. you know, uh, I realized, and my director was like, no, 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 no. This is your own show now. You you don't need all these people. Yeah. Um, and financially it was, you know, costly to travel with all these people and of course. Et cetera. So that's when I started started. It became Countess Cabaret. Okay. You know. Got it. How long did it take for you to make up for the money that you had to put up front? And how much money did you have to put up front to start it? Well, you know, um, you know, a show for me with the band and travel and hotels, you know, we're talking like uh at that time. Probably like it depends on the venue too. Some sure. venues pay for hotels, like okay. casinos pay for the hotel, sure. pay for their the rooms and stuff like that. Sometimes I get a travel, you know, budget. Yeah. Um. So it really depends, but okay. you know, you know, I'm spending like somewhere in the 10k area to okay. get everybody where they have to be and okay, and then and the, to put on a show. Then the revenue is obviously generated from I would assume merch sales and ticket sales, correct? Uh, yeah, ticket okay. sales and and yeah. And then are you and able merch. to in in a structure like that? Can you negotiate? food and beverage or is that like, oh usually? they usually have a stipend for that okay and okay. uh or a casino will feed us etc okay gotcha yeah, so well that's just another point yeah. to go get your tickets uh, calgary <laughs> and edmonton step your game up <laughs> you're gonna be there rocking it if you haven't seen it on tiktok you gotta see you you throw some of those videos out there those reels of you performing oh yeah I, like you know it I is do, incredible oh uh, thanks i do you know i do like david bowie i do all the songs that i love and you know it's funny because i have a really young audience because yeah. their mother they grew up with you know, watching with mommy. Yep. And so, and mommy knows all the songs that I know. Yep. So guess what? They know all the songs that That's I know, true. which is amazing. Yep. And I love my fans. You know, they show up for me. They come dressed in sequins and Giovanni and statement necklaces. You know, yep. they show up for the countess. And I love that. <laughs> and it's totally, you know, I've had fans that have gone to Beyonce and they're like, we had a better time at your show because That's so they're cool. connected <laughs> to me. Yeah. I actually the community. talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They can, because I do a Q&A with the audience. Um, you know, I refer to the show. They they know each other already in the yeah. audience because they have that common thread of housewives. Yeah. So my fans will go out together. Yeah. They meet at my shows and then they hang. They make new friends. It's it's amazing. Okay. I, I have to say, it's really amazing. All it's right. such. I'm gonna put you in a tough position here. Okay. okay. You got Mary Fuck Kill coming up. <laughs> F, sorry, F. Marry, yeah. F, kill. Yeah. I'm going to do a couple of your businesses, and you got to marry, F, and kill. Oh, here, okay. Here we go, it. right? Okay. So welcome to Crappy Lake, the cabaret. Oh. And then what I'll say is I'm going to put these in the same category, the singles and the book. So it's the singles and the book. Welcome to Crappy Lake in the cabaret. Oh, the that's, toughest question. That's the toughest. How I are mean, you going to do it? Oh, uh, how am I going to do it? Well, I'm going to have to... Um, what were the choices again? <laughs> so you got your music and book in one. So your uh, okay. singles and your book in one. Welcome to Crappy Lake okay. and the Cabaret. Well, I'm going to marry the Cabaret. Yes, it's my you love. love that. It's my love. Um, I'm going to have to kill the music because I can make new music. 
Ooh, I like that. That's a good reason. And I'm gonna f Sonya and <laughs> Crappy Lake. Oh, well, that's gonna next be a good season. Clip. <laughs> next season coming up. <laughs> the renewal just got done. That's yeah, a teaser Sonya and I right become there. lesbian lovers. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you what. That's another curveball. Let's go back a little bit to Real Housewives. The moment you found out that you guys were no longer going to be on the show and they're going to do a total rebrand, tell me about what that felt for you and how you were thinking through career steps of what would be next when you find that news out. Well, when I found out, I had already done Crappy Lake, mm -hmm. so I was really excited about moving on okay. from the Housewives in, in, in any case. Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting because... I was like, I don't think I'm going to do another season. And you know what? I manifested it. Interesting. <laughs> How weird I got. You're a manifesting I'm machine. I'm a manifesting machine. Oh, what I wanted to say about manifestation is, you know what I listen to in the morning that I think people should know is I listen to positive affirmations. Okay. You know, literally, I wake up in a mood. Yeah. I say these positive affirmations, I mean, 10 minutes, So when you say minutes. you listen to them, what do you mean? On YouTube. I'll oh. listen to positive affirmations really? on YouTube videos that people make or just um, the, the, you know, vocal whatever yeah. and um and by the end of this thing i'm smiling from ear to ear wow and yeah. you're are you kind of repeating this stuff back to yeah. yourself yeah i gotta give that a shot you gotta give it a shot i'm telling I mean, you I, I, yeah I yeah feel so like I, so when so when i found out i was not devastated yeah i was i felt like i was cheated on sure for sure yeah it's like well, what do you mean and why yeah. call it rony i know we're it's, rony. that's not what it you is you can't just give our name away yeah 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 you know what I mean? that was the only thing and then and then, you know, they wanted to do, you know, um, Housewives, um, um, oh, my God, what did they call it? Legacy. Yeah, they wanted oh, yeah, to do Housewives Legacy. legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wanted to do a show with our cast. Yeah. You know, it didn't pan out. Yeah. Um, why, why is that? You know, there was conflicts with negotiations and okay. contracts. And At stuff. that point, everyone. At that had point, their everybody own. was like, you no know, one was working as a unit in an ensemble anymore. Yeah. It, it was, was like, you know, we got a low ball, and, you know, it was yeah. like, you know what? And I had kind of moved on in my head already with Crappy Lake and my big cabaret career. Yeah. So I really was like kind of ready. Who? The, it sounds like you took it pretty well and you already had your next steps lined up. Mm -hmm. If you had to look at your peer group, who do you think from the peer group kind of took it the hardest? You know, um, I would say probably Sonia because yeah. I think, you know, financially it would have been better for her to yeah. do both shows. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, she's doing her shows on in your city. Of course. Um, and um, you know, but I think, you know, she could have really used that cash. Yeah. You know? I think D is good, Ramon is good. Yeah. You know, so um and at that time, you know, Jill Zarin was gonna be along and yep. that didn't pan out. And so, you know, there was so many reasons why that didn't happen, but I'm so glad that they came back to us with an ultimate girls trip. And, That's going to be fun. And I yeah. thought to myself, it's ideal because yeah. you got us all for a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A week exactly. is a no-brainer. We yeah, don't yeah, have to yeah. share our lives. Quick. You know, it's yeah. quick. It's affordable St. Bart's. For them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's St. Bart's. I mean, who doesn't want to get paid to go to St. Bart's? Yeah, exactly. So that really worked out well for okay. me. And um, so I think, um, I think, yeah, that, that, that was a good move for them. Cool. You have, you wear a producer hat, creative hat, mm -hmm. entrepreneur hat. I mean, literally every hat possibly you wear, when you look back at what they did with Roni, knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that business decision that they made? Um, like from a marketing producer. To be perfectly creator. honest, I would have just brought some new people to our cast. But yeah, that's That probably would have been it. Yeah, right? that's, but that's just, you know my opinion but i think the new cast is great i yeah. love the new roni girls i think that people need to give them a chance they're yeah. new um but i think they're all interesting and and i think um they did a great job casting and yep. i think they did a great job with the show i love it all right my next book that's coming out it's called talk money to me and it's all about the marriage of love and money you've had a couple marriages you've yes. had a ton of success yeah. you've married people with a lot of success <laughs> so i want to dive down your overall take about the concept of love and money. I'm gonna start first start with like a general question. Do you have any tips or tactics for relationships when trying to manage the two when it comes to two individuals, people that are working, coming from money or bringing in money, just any overall general rules with love and money through your years? Gosh, um, <clears throat> you know, I, 
I met the count and he asked me to marry him five days later. That's wild, by and the way. And we got married two weeks later. It took us two weeks to get it, to get it together. And we eloped in New York, actually. Wow. And, um, and you know, money was never, I mean, obviously he was of course. doing well yeah. and living in Switzerland, but it's in a small apartment in Switzerland, you huh. know. Um, his father was ambassador to Monaco for 40 years. Right. A lot of people don't know the history of the Delaseps. The you know the great great grandfather built the Suez Canal was responsible for that and the Panama Canal. Wow! He was the chief engineer and um, Monaco's and no mastermind. Joke, That's no joke. Yeah, and and the family gave the Statue of Liberty to the United States for the French. Wow! So if you go to the Statue of Liberty, you'll see. De La, Ferdinand de Lesseps all over the place because he's the guy that they, because he was so important in France at the time. Yeah. So people think I got the Countess title from a Cracker Jacks box, which is not the case. <laughs> but you know, a lot of aristocrats are not very rich. Yeah. You know what I mean? They hang around with people with money. Okay, got <laughs> Do you it. know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. And everybody wants a prince or a count right. or, you know, or right. a lady, lord, whatever. Sure. Uh, around. So it, it's not like they had a ton of money. So I didn't really marry him for money. I married him because I loved him. Yeah. So, you know, I think, like I said earlier, if you follow your heart, it's yeah. really hard to go wrong. Now, together, we were the dynamic duo. Yeah. You know, after we got married, you know, we built uh, another house. His parents died, actually, yeah. soon after we got married. Yeah. And um, we kind of took down the house. It was in an area in Stad in Switzerland, which was not the most expensive, not next to the Palace Hotel. Yeah. <laughs> and I said to Alex, you can't give this house away. You know, knock it down. Let's build a big-ass house and sell it and make sure. some money. And that's really how we started to really have acquire some – some 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 interesting good cash so yeah the wealth thing and then so um, there were in a relationship like that there wasn't a prenup then no you didn't have time for a fucking uh, prenup. You didn't have time for a prenup. Are you days. no i mean we got married after two weeks and then before we knew it we had two kids all right let me ask you a personal question <laughs> so this is person this is more of like you're gonna teach us all mm. we live in a world where everyone is delaying marriage everyone's delaying mm -hmm. everything it's taking forever what type of advice do you have for us for someone that was that decisive within 20 days? You know when you know. You do? I think you do. Okay. And I think what happens is we know. Yeah. Our gut tells us what to do. Yeah. But then we get we up and overthink. Our head. And then now we get more than up ever, we overthink. So, and I always say, hop yeah. on the train or at least without you. And it's so I true. know so many people that have missed so many opportunities oh, so because true. they didn't follow their instinct. I know. And they thought too hard about it. Mm -hmm. They procrastinated and they lost the opportunity. Yeah. You know, when that road comes and you go left or right, you better decide really quick. I think That's personally, I think that the longer you uh, you get into your head, yeah. the more messed up you get. That's yeah. why I'm a big believer in meditation, and I love Joe Dispenza. Okay. If people don't know who Joe Dispenza yeah. is, they need to look him up. Got it. Um, because I actually just came back from a um, from an event of his, which is a week long event where you go to the quantum field. Okay. I've actually been to the quantum where okay. you can actually manifest oh. your dreams and bring them back to a three D reality. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> Joe, Dispenza. Joe Dispenza, meditation, positive affirmation, and oh, manifestation. Yeah. Uh -huh. It sounds like that's the triple threat, and it is totally, mm -hmm. totally works for you in every well, way. Well, this is where, you know, uh, what's his name? Robbins. Um, yeah. Um, um, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Yeah. You know, they're all, this is their philosophy, and sure. it is true. Yeah. I mean, I, I asked a person yesterday, do you know what the quantum field is? They're like, yeah. not really. Yeah. Interesting. And, it, and it's actually there. Yeah. And people don't know it. And, you know, it's you have to find that door. Oh. Once you find the door, then you can actually open it and go in there. Wow. All right. So it's pretty, while we're on the topic, yeah. <laughs> where are we going next, Lynn? What do you mean? Oh, I'm going to Tulum. <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> that's the Mayan culture. Yeah. I swear to God, that is a place. That's the spot. Where... You and that's where you get centered. Oh, and yeah, you get centered. I, I'm connected to the earth. I spend okay. most of my time in the yeah. sand on the beach. And, okay. you know, I go to bikini boot camp for yeah. a week. <laughs> kick your ass a little I, bit. Yeah, they kick my ass at the same time. Yeah. It's just, you know, they have the best, you know, like spas. And you can go yeah. there and do the, the the you know, the the thing where you go inside. Oh, my God, I'm forgetting. The, the cold plunge? Cold plunge, Co hot no, sauna. Plug, where you go in the 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 steam room. The, yeah, the, yeah, it's a steam, but it's more than a steam. It's oh you're in the dark, okay, in like hundred degrees, and okay. there's prayers being said and sent to the okay to the universe. You're doing like a full reset. Yeah. So what out of life right now do you want? Smoke lodge. Smoke, smoke lodge. lodge. Yeah. 
what do you want out of life professionally that you haven't already done or accomplished? What's next? I, you know, my dream is, um, look, I'm a, a host, mm -hmm. really. You know, I host my own cabaret show. Yeah. I love variety. I grew up watching Carol Burnett. My dream job is to be um, one of the hosts of Late Night. Really? Why shouldn't I? There's I love that. room for a woman in late night. Yeah, so. I mean, you're doing and it And I do every it all day. in any case. Yeah. <laughs> I do it in any case on the stage, so why not bring it to television? All right. Well, we talk again, we talk money here. When people come to your show, how, what can they expect price range per ticket? Um, there's a variety okay. of, you know, there's meet and greet tickets and okay. sitting up in front tickets, and but affordable for everyone. Okay. So there's there's ticket prices for everyone. I gotcha. like to make my show accessible to everyone. Okay. There we go. I got to ask you about a couple more businesses. The Drink Fose. Yes. Rose. Tell me a little bit about how you got into that business and how it's doing. You know, during COVID, um, I was uh, sober with my daughter yeah. and we couldn't find anything in the market that we liked. Yeah. That was elevated and elegant. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you'd ask for sparkling water or mm. you ask for Diet Coke and right away it's like, uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, she knows what you yeah. want more. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there was nothing where you could say, oh, I'll take a bottle of Fosé. Yeah. You know? Oh, I like so, that. faux. Okay. Fosé. Faux fur. Okay. Faux rosé. I you know, like that. Fosé. Yeah. That's how I came up with the name. It makes sense. And how's that? And it was damn too? good, not good. Okay. Well, I had to why kill that, is that business. Though? Well, I lost my financial backing. Okay, gotcha. You know, and um, and that's what really happened. Okay. And I didn't know enough about the business in order to take that on myself. Yeah. You know, the whole bottling distribution. It was like a big, a big deal. Okay. So um, so unfortunately I had to let that one go. Now I'm working on jewelry. Jewelry. Yes. That's <laughs> which you, is a no-brainer. Which is a no-brainer. Yeah, but especially when you do your shows, exactly. you just I saw the last video you did Dripping. that's on TikTok. And I mean, I was like, how does that not weigh you down? You had so much day of jewelry on it, but it must have weighed you down. What's the jewelry business gonna look like? What does it cost to start a jewelry line? Well, I'm I'm doing a collaboration okay. um, with the company, and um, we're just still finalizing our contract. And but, but you know, I'm hoping to get it on HSN or QVC. And um, really, it's like the faux diamond okay. business. You okay. know, making luxury like what I wear. Okay. Um, affordable for, for everyone. everyone. So okay. everyone can feel like a countess. It, oh, wow. <laughs> you are a branding <laughs> genius. <laughs> All right. I got to step into branding then. One branding tip for people that don't know how to brand themselves. You know, I think being authentic okay. to who you are, um, something that, you know, listen, I've tried a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and some stick and some don't. Yeah. And I think to come out with one thing. Yeah. Is important because if you have one thing that does well, That's then true. you're going to get a lot of other things. It's that the does momentum well. behind it. It's the momentum, the authenticity yeah. of the brand, and and I think um, you know obviously the work that goes into you know creating it, finding the right partners if you can't financially afford it. Yeah. Going on Shark Tank. Yep. <laughs> you know Check what I mean? Check that box. Check that box. I haven't done that yet, but yeah. you, know, you never know. I think you need to add that to your list. <laughs> yeah, you might right. Have to be a that. Guest shark one of these days. <laughs> Um, well, you know, who came to my show um, is Robert Hirschbeck. Oh, wow. Yeah, he came to my show in Toronto because yeah, it was I thought you were going to say Barbara. I feel like, I feel yeah, like Barbara Corcoran no. would be at your no, show. No, I would love to have Barbara Corcoran. But, the, other, uh, the other thing I think you've done well, if you look at like all your business achievements and successes, you have the ability to think through something, but then execute. A lot of people have the ability to think through things, but they don't execute it. They get stuck in paralysis. Right. What type of trading secrets do you have on execution? You know, I think uh, it takes a team. Yeah. I think you have to be surrounded by the right people, you know, that are supportive, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, financially or just to lift you up and keep you going. Yeah. Um, I think it really is about that and and being persistent. Yeah. And, you know, really giving it a, a solid try. Yeah. You know, if you don't try things... <laughs> right? What are we no doing? guts, no glory, I always I say. <laughs> it is weird how so many people just don't, they think through it, but they just won't give it a shot. Right. It's the fear of everyone else. I don't think social media helps that either. Well, right? fear comes knocking, and when fear comes knocking at the door, that's when faith has to answer. Yeah, absolutely. I think you need to write, I think you need to like <laughs> head up a boot camp or something. Right? Like, I think you could be boot a camp cult is leader cabaret. And I, would, I would sign up. Like, <laughs> All right. Oh, I know. I have, I have a lot of good quotes, don't I? I'm you do have the good quotes, the man of the smoke house, you're doing all that stuff. Oh, yeah. All right. One thing I want to follow up with, we went with the financial high. 
Do you have a financial low? Can you think of a time where it was a tough moment or just a memory you don't remember or something maybe you're not proud of or an investment you lost on, a financial low through your wild run, which has been since 2008? You know, <laughs> I think, you know, I was I was really upset that the Fosé didn't work out for me. Yeah. Um, I had a clothing line years ago. Um, that, you know, was a grind and it didn't really work out for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I just keep, keep it moving, you yeah. know, keep on coming up with other things that I'm passionate about. Yeah. Um, and you know, listen, I was made a friend one season on the housewives. Yeah. There you go. That was a contract thing. Mm. Talking about Ramona, you know, some of the girls signed a contract and I said, Oh no, I'm not taking that. And then that's yeah. what happened to me. Interesting. <laughs> I got a little slap on the hand okay, for that one. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I've had my moments, believe me. And, you know, and guess what? Mm. I didn't, wasn't used in the promo that year either. Interesting. And that was a real slap in the face for me. Yeah. And guess what? She came back. Oh, she came back. I was not defeated. I said, you know what? They're not going to de defeat me on this one. And I came back as a regular cast member the next season. So I didn't let that get in my way. Ego is something we need to check. Check. Yeah. You know? Well, ego can really damage people. That's why meditation is getting out of your ego and you're yeah. getting into that space where you do lead with your heart. So I can't emphasize how important that has been for me and manifestation. It does feel like a lot of Real Housewives, though, mm -hmm. the epicenter of every disagreement feels like it's ego. Do you agree with that or no? Well, I, I think, yeah, but not to say that ego doesn't get us to where we need to go. Yeah. It's just checking your ego, make sure okay. it's in the right place. So let the ego drive, but don't let it dominate. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. More wise words from the Countess. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think, too, we, we had A-Rod on. Yeah. He's top five in all strikeout batters in the world. Like, no, only four other, or there's only four other people on the entire planet that have played baseball that have struck out more than him. All right. But when you strike out, you find your successes, and we all know the achievement he had. Exactly. That reminds me of some of the things that you just said. Right. All right, I got a question for you. I did say your first episode or your first season, you said 10K. Mm. Can you give us any idea towards the end around how high it got? You know, let's, listen, the, the housewives that have been around for a while, they're making well into the millions. Per season. Mm -hmm. Damn, they're killing it out there. Unbelievable. <laughs> Without giving you a solid number. Without getting a solid it's a six number. Figure, yeah. And no contractual issues. Is it's it in six that figure? No, it's seven figures. Seven figures in that yeah. range. Unbelievable. Will we see you back on Housewives again? Never say never. Never say never. Always say maybe. Always say maybe. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. why? Because if you say no, it's no. Okay. If you say yes, it's yes. Okay. Maybe gives you the chance to change your mind. So if they come knocking and you open that door, it's going to be a maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Can't mess with the countess. She's as sharp as they come. All right, Luann, we got to end with a trading secret. But before we do, one more time, someone wants to see your cabaret shows in Edmonton or in Calgary. Yeah. Tell us the locations and where to go one more time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's uh, <clears throat> December 15th at the Great Eagle Event Center Casino and uh, the 16th in Anuk at the River Creek Casino or Resort. And um, and then go to CountessLuann.com for my tickets and uh, my new tour dates, which are coming up February 16th, kicking off in Los Angeles at the Wilton, where Madonna plays. I'm thrilled. I love it. Well, I already told you. My brother, who you said you do attract a gay crowd, he is a gay man, and he has come cheered you on before, and he had a great time. Uh, we might have to go to one of these shows. Oh, you Throw have to. Get You're a little video out there. It'll be perfect for when we promote the podcast. All right, we need to get a trading secret from you, Luann. It's one trading secret that you can't find in a textbook, can't learn from a professor, you can't Google or find in a YouTube tutorial, even those positive affirmation YouTubes. We got to get it from you, Luann. Number one housewife by TV Guide. What is the trading secret you could leave us with? You can also take your time because we could edit pauses. Out. Oh, okay. Well, let's see what's better. I mean, life is a cabaret. Oh, okay. And you write your own story. Okay. You know, as much as I was told that life is not a cabaret, <laughs> it's just not a cabaret. <laughs> well, guess what? It is. And it's mine. All right. For someone listening right now that's not familiar with cabarets and they want you to tell me more, they say, tell me more what you mean by that. Life is not a cabaret. Explain it a little life more. Life is a cabaret because what life it means, life is a cabaret because what it means is, is you really write your own story. Yeah. You know, it is up to you 
to put those words down. It is up to you to make that next move. It is up to you to decide. It's up to you to turn right or left. It's up to you to jump on that train or it leaves without you. Mm. So that's all a part of what I mean when I say life is a cabaret yeah. because it's up to you. I love that. And I think if you're back home right now listening and you feel that your story is being ripped for you in any way or that you're not holding that pencil, mm. this is a reminder. Life is a cabaret. That's right. Luann, thank you so much for being on this episode of Trading Secrets. Where can people find everything you have going on, your socials and all things Luann? Well, it's Countess Luann on Instagram and CountessLuann.com for all my dates. Beautiful. Countess Luann for all of uh, my dates and uh, shows coming up and, you know, bio and all that good stuff. So CountessLuann.com for all info. Check it out. <laughs> keep on meditating. Keep on manifesting. <laughs> keep dancing left and right and singing that heart out. And we'll be watching from afar. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you for coming what on. What a pleasure.